Peace, peace. How you doing? It's your boy Justice Wally, man. Thank you for tuning to Young Scholar 103. Definitely subscribe to the YouTube, invite a friend, follow us on Facebook as well. Also, um, today is a very good topic I want to elaborate on, and the topic is absence of African American fathers. And yes, uh, my teacher, Dr. Jawanza Kujufu, been talking about this for a long time, and he came with a formula, but only a 5% of people really grasped it and understood it. Me too, coming from Chicago, not having my mother and father in the same household as well. Um, I, it was a slower progress for me, but I was able to elevate. And I did the same particular things that any normally kid do. Um, I participated in games, activities. I got high, um, I ran the streets, I had my fun and ways with women. But as I got older and wiser, I was able to understand that I wanted something better and, and I wanted something better for me before I even had kids. So we're going to break this down, we're going to make it short, we're going to keep it under 10 minutes. Because we all understand that only 32% of kids actually have their fathers in their household. Yes, only 32%. Because we understand that it's 103 million Caucasians in North America, and it's not that many of us, especially if you really dig into them little pocket towns and area in them small counties that we don't know any of about. But the million-dollar question is, is the village or the community strong enough to educate and raise that 68% of kids that do not have the father in their household? Or do we have the resource to raise that 68 kids who who need help in education and, 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 and raising? That's why it's critical to develop relationships for older black males to be coaches and mentors towards the youth because it's an image control. It's the Willie Lynch syndrome. Teach us this and that, young versus old, light versus dark, straight hair, curly hair, dread, short face, you know, all that nonsense. But then it, there's another issue. And the other issue is at the hearts of the role of the mothers. And some of the mothers that's in it, just some of the mothers raising their daughters but loving their sons. They actually raising their daughters and loving their sons. Meaning that they raising their daughters and they love their daughters, but they're not really taking time to show them how to be mothers, how to be a wife, how to be um, a woman of independence and integrity and, 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 and beauty. Or even to love themselves so they create a low, so, uh, low self-esteem and the boys, they become handicapped because they don't know that struggle. They don't know what that hard life is. They don't know how it feels to get punched. They don't know how it feels to feel not wanted or to be told no because they are now being programmed and handicapped at a young age. And we wonder why so many older adults still stay at home with their mothers, live with women, living off women, and such and foremost. But we got to understand that the daughters are much more responsible and are much more important as the boys are. Because it's a few things that I learned is that in motivating kids and motivating black boys and motivating girls, you got to engage their minds and their hearts. I motivated kids in, in, to hopefully live by the example and perhaps by exciting them. And I have a productive idea to make others feel involved. Because if you got talent, protect it and utilize it. Don't let your talent go to waste. Because that 68%, I want to speak to y'all and let y'all know that learning is the beginning of wealth. Learning is the beginning of health. Learning is the beginning of spirituality. Searching and learning is where the miracle all process begins. Because no matter how many goals you have achieved, 
you still have to set your eyes on a higher one. And I does that continually and consistently. As long as I'm breathing, it's never too late. Because that 68% of them kids that don't have a father or that stepfather's not showing them no love because they only there for their mother. We got to figure out ways that we can volunteer our time as mentor, big brother, big sister clubs and be able to help these individuals. Because there's some boys out here don't even have mothers. And you got to ask yourself, what is the conspiracy on black boys? And why is there a conspiracy on black boys and not men? Why? Because if you catch them while they eat boys, you'll get them before they turn men. Why do the big man love the devil? Now that he's a big man, why do he love the devil? Because the devil told him how to eat the wrong foods when they was babies. See, we got to make time for them. We got to listen to them. We got to teach them trades such as carpentry, electrician, or plumbing. We got to teach them how to cook, sew, about hygiene. We got to teach them how to write. We got to teach them how to research. We got to teach them the difference between facts and opinions. We got to teach them to encourage them to stay aware of the news at home and aboard. To be able to compass what's going on outside of them and also to be able to have their own independent thought, their own independent uh, progress and learning how to interact with these things. We also got to teach them how to interact with the police. We got to teach them how to observe and record police misconducts. We got to teach them, encourage them to buy books and teach them to read and, and discuss it with them. We can go all day, but there's so many ways we can teach our babies. And I'm going to end on this note. If you ask me what I'm doing, or if you was to ask me what I came into this purpose and this Young Scholar 103 to do, I would tell you to live out loud. Because I work too hard and too long to let anybody or anything stand in the way of my goals. I would not let my teammates down. I would not let my race down. And I would not let myself down. Salute and peace. Y'all have a blessed day. Peace.